Greetings to everyone. I am Dr. Roman Datta. I work as a senior consultant in the Department of Thoracic Surgery and Robotic Thoracic Surgery at the Max Healthcare. In the next few descriptive slides, I will be discussing an important surgical procedure, tube thoracostomy, which is mostly undertaken in an emergency setting in the Department of Emergency or Casualty. Tube thoracostomy is a surgical insertion of a hollow flexible plastic tube through the chest wall into the pleural cavity to drain fluid or the air. There are various important points which uh, we will be touching upon in the new uh, in, the, in the next few descriptive slides about we will we'll be discussing about the indications where we put the thoracic catheter or chest tube. We will also be touching upon few points where we should be very careful and not to put a cyst tube. We will also go through the pre-insertion pre assessment of a patient before inserting a cyst tube and uh, we will also be discussing a step by step techniques uh, of uh, placing a safe thoracostomy tube into the pleural cavity and we will also deliberate on the few possible complications which can occur in a patient uh, during the cyst tube insertion procedures and at the end we will also be taking care of uh, uh, the cyst tube and the drainage bags and a few salient points how to manage them after putting the cyst tube. Commonly the cyst tube is uh, inserted uh, for presence of fluid or air in the pleural cavity. The presence of air is known as pneumothorax which can be uh, a spontaneous pneumothorax or it could be a secondary to some kind of a diseased lung or a traumatic pneumothorax. Sometimes when the air accumulates too fast in the pleural cavity and uh, resulting in complete collapse of the lung and shifting of the mediastinum to the opposite side may require an emergency decompression of the cyst pleural cavity by inserting a needle initially followed by a tube thoracostomy. This condition is called tension pneumothorax. The cyst tube catheter is also inserted for various uh, uh, situations where fluid is accumulated in the pleural cavity like peroneumonic effusions or ampimatorosis or a case of uh, hydronemothorax or a case of uh, hemonemothorax uh, following the trauma to the cyst. Cyst tube is also inserted following postoperative procedures in the esophagus, lung, or mediastinal or pleural surgery and it is also an integral part after carrying out a pleural sclerotic procedures like pleurodosis for a malignant pleural effusions or pneumothorax. Sometimes uh, in case of uh, post pneumonectomy bronchopleural fistula, a cyst tube insertion can be done by a competent thoracic surgeon. There are no absolute contraindications for a cyst tube insertion. If a cyst tube insertion needs to be done, it has to be done. But one should be careful about uh, uh, few clinical conditions where uh, we need to take uh, necessary precautions before carrying out a tube thoracostomy procedures. Like if the patient has a coagulopathy or the, if the patient is on anticoagulant medications, this requires special attentions. If there is a history of previous uh, thoracic procedures like thoracotomy done on the patients which can lead to additions between the lung parenchyma and the cyst wall and in these situations uh, one needs to take utmost precautions so that they do not injure the underlying lung while putting a cyst tube. One should also be careful about uh, the possibility of an eventration of diaphragm or the presence of diaphragmatic hernia where one can put a cyst tube into uh, through the diaphragm into any intestinal organs. A student needs to uh, understand a thorough preoperative uh, pre procedure assessment of the patients, and uh, it is uh, usually uh, done through imaging study with a CS X ray. And uh, if it is required, then one can uh, go ahead with an ultrasound of the cyst or a computed tomography of the cyst. In non emergent situations, it is uh, ideal to have a coagulation parameter checked before inserting a cyst tube. 
one should always explain the risk, the benefits and the possible complications that may happen during the procedure and due informed written consent should be taken from the patients before undertaking a procedures. Always two clinicians should be there to verify the site of the pathology and the nature of the pathology before putting a cest tube. And it is a good practice to establish a good IV line and oxygen through the mask or the nasal prong and the patient should be monitored for oxygen saturation, heart rate through an ECG monitoring system. And in anxious patients, when one can give a pre-procedure anxiolytic medication, small dose like midazolam. Now we will go through few slides uh, to emphasize on the importance uh, of uh, and evaluating the patients before the procedure with a SES X-ray. Here is an X-ray where you can see on the right side there is a translucent area which is devoid of lung markings and this is the picture of a pneumothorax on the right side where on the left side you can see the lung marking till the periphery. The collapsed lung can be seen here which is marked with a star. Now, why uh, if anyone is in doubt about the presence of pneumothorax, then the, uh, a further higher imaging studies should be carried out. For example, on the figure A, as you can see, there is a translucent area which is devoid of air marking. But on a CT cyst of the same patients, it showed a huge bulla on the right side. So, in this case, a cyst tube is not indicated. If the cyst tube is placed inadvertently into the pleural cavity, this can lead into a bronchopleural fistula and with a continuous air leak through the cyst tube. This is another x-ray which is showing uh, an air fluid level here on the right side and you can see the lung marking on this side. So, this is a picture of an infected lung bulla which also uh, do not require an immediate cyst tube uh, insertions but would require a proper evaluation with a computer tomography and later definitive surgical procedure like bullectomy. This is an x-ray of a patient where we can see uh, a hydronemothorax on the right side. We have a left lung where we can see the lung markings. This is the mediastinum that is a heart shadow, cardiac cellot and this kind of a picture is usually seen in a post pneumonectomy space where the fluids gradually fills up to obliterate the cavity and this is also one situation where one do not need to put a cest tube. This is an PA projections of two patients where you can see a completely opaque left hemithorax which is seen in massive pleural effusions completely obliterating the pleural cavity and on the left side on figure B is another patient's x-ray which is showing a carbilinear border upper border of a pleural effusion on the right side. In cases of complete obliterations or complete opacifications on one hemithorax, if uh, one is doubtful about the presence or absence of fluid, it is a good practice to carry out an ultrasound to see the nature of fluid collections in the pleural cavity. This is, these are two x-rays of two different patients where we can see a loculated pleural effusions on by the side of the cest wall. This kind of a picture is usually seen in case of loculated pleural collections or empyematorosis, which can be drained by putting a catheter under ultrasound guidance. This is one situation where one should always undertake an ultrasound evaluations for proper site marking before inserting a cyst tube. This uh, is a picture to emphasize the importance of uh, ultrasound evaluation of the cyst in a case of pleural effusions, as you can see this anequic dark area which uh, is the pleural effusions, pleural free pleural fluid in the pleural cavity. Also you can see the diaphragm and uh, you can see the moving lung and the diaphragm here. In the next few slides we will be discussing uh, the techniques of uh, inserting a safe tube, safe tube with utmost safety. All surgical residents uh, need to evaluate the patient uh, clinically at the time of uh, tube thoracostomy procedures. The residents should assess the vitals of the patients and uh, be clear about uh, whether the patient is clinically stable enough for insertion of the cyst tube in the ward 
or he or she needs to be shifted to the operating room or intensive care unit for insertion of a cyst tube. One should also have an idea about uh, the indications of the cyst tube insertion, whether it is meant for draining fluid or air. If it is meant for draining air from the pleural cavity, usually a thin bore tube like 24, 20 francs or maybe 24 francs tube is uh, good enough for draining air from the pleural cavity. But if it is meant for draining viscous fluids like blood or thick empyema fluid, usually a wider bore tube like 20, 28 francs, 32 francs or 36 francs tube is required. One should also uh, take a proper history about the presence of, of anticoagulation therapy at the time of insertion of cyst tube. In routine cases of cyst tube placement, if the patient is on anticoagulations, then one can wait for a day or two if it is possible after stopping the anticoagulation medications like warfarin. One should also identify the correct site and the side of the pathology before commencing a tube thoracostomy procedures. If it is uh, in the case of loculated pleural effusions, then it is a good practice to mark, mark the site of the cyst tube insertions under ultrasound evaluations. It is imperative that we should check all the necessary instruments and the surgical tubes and the drainage bottles ahead of commencing the thoracostomy procedures. There are few surgical instruments which will be described in the next slides. We should also check about the cyst tubes of various size and appropriate tubes should be selected for inserting into the patients. Various underwater cell drainage systems are also available which will be described in the next descriptive slides. One should have uh, local anesthetic solutions available by the side of the patients which are usually lidocaine 2% and if it are required intravenous angiolytic drugs should also be available by the side of the patients. Skin preparation solutions like povidone iodine or chlorhexidine gluconate solutions should be available at the time of inserting the cyst tubes. In the case of elective cyst tube placements or in case of traumatic settings, an IV antibiotic is given before inserting a cyst tube. This is a photograph uh, which uh, has all the necessary uh, surgical instruments which are required for at the time of placement of a cyst tube. We should have uh, sterile gauze pieces in a bowl where the providen iodine or the chlorhexidine gluconate solutions will be poured in for painting the operating site. We need uh, a needle holder, a silk suture for fixation of the tube. We should have carved clamps, artery clamps for ins blunt dissection and insertion of the tube into the pleural cavity. A scale pill with uh, number 15 blades on the tip of it is uh, required to mark a skin incision site. This is a picture where you wish to show the various cyst tubes which are uh, essentially used for performing a tube thoracostomy procedures. We have uh, straight flexible tube, we have carved flexible tube, we also we have tubes with a metallic trocar inside. As you can see, the cyst tube has uh, few draining holes at the tip of the, at the end of the cyst tube and on the tail end it is, it has a tapered end which is cut and connected into a underwater drainage collecting system.